This screencast covers the material in Module 4, Lesson 33, the final lesson of Module 4. If you're following my sequence, I do have some review uh, lessons before we do our final assessment. And we're going to create story context for numerical expressions and tape diagrams. We're going to solve some word problems. I have... Uh, taken some from the practice set, some from the homework. There's a couple examples where I have uh, the practice set and an equivalent homework problem on the same page, so I'll work through the process for the practice set and show you how it's similar to the word problem in the homework. Ms. Hayes has a half liter of juice. She distributes it equally to six students in her tutoring group. How many liters of juice does each student get? Well, let's go to a tape diagram, and we're going to take our whole liter, and we're going to break it down into two equal parts. All right, so we could uh, say this is one whole liter, and we got our half liter here. So now I'm going to shade in half. We want to divide that half into six equal parts. I'm going to just one. We have to do that with the other half as well, so that we find our denominator. Let's set up the problem. I have one half divided into six equal parts. If I look at my tape diagram, I now see that my one half becomes six twelfths. Six twelfths is easily divided by six. We get one twelfth. So each student gets one twelfth. In the second part, how many more? How many more liters of juice will Ms. Hayes need? She wants to give each of her 24 students in her class the same amount of juice as found in part A. Part a. I'm going to presume that how much more than what she had here, which was my half liter. So we know that one stu each student gets uh, one twelfth of a liter. So one unit equals one twelfth of a liter. I need 24 units. 24 units equals 1 twelfth times 24. I'm going to go up here. So 1 twelfth is times 24 is 1 times 24 divided by 12. We can make this a 2 and this a 1. And we get 2 liters. That's two liters, but how much more? How many more liters? So I have two liters minus one half, and that equals one and a half. So the answer is one and a half liters. I just want to relate this with the problem on the bottom. And uh, we have Chase as a volunteer at a uh, shelter, animal shelter, feeding and playing with cats. If he can make five servings of food from a third of a kilogram of food, how much does one serving weigh? Well, in this case, instead of our whole being one half, our whole is one third. Instead of breaking it down into six servings, we're going to break it down into five servings. So you can see that part A in the homework is very similar to part A in our practice set. If Chase wants to give the same serving to each of uh, 20 cats, how many kilograms of food will he need? Well, it doesn't say how many more, so the homework is a little bit simpler. We don't have to go to this final step. But again, we can use our answer from A to find out what one unit is, and then we simply need to find out what 20 units is. Okay, this is directly from your homework. Mrs. Uh, Ms. Geronimo has a $10 gift certificate at the local bakery. And we have a couple scenarios here. If she buys a slice of pie for $2.20 and uses the rest for, of the gift certificate to buy chocolate macaroons that cost $0.60 cents each, how many macaroons will Ms. Geronimo buy? Well, we know the whole is 10 And we also know that she's going to buy the pie for $2.20, and she's going to have something left over. And what she has left over is going to be 
uh, used to buy macaroons at 60 cents each. I'm going to use my ellipsis. I don't know how many. So I've got one and then my question mark. So what does that mean? Well, we'll take our $10 and we need to subtract the $2.20 and then we need to take the remainder and see how many six tenths or sixty one hundredths are left in that difference. A B, she changes her mind and instead buys a loaf of bread for four dollars sixty cents and buys the rest of the cookies that cost one and a half times the macaroons. Okay, once again we have a tape diagram. Our hole is still ten. Except we're now going to spend some money on bread, which is 460, and again we need to find what's left. And then we have to take that and we're going to have to find out how many cookies we can buy. Now, we know that the chocolate macaroons were 60 cents, and we need one and a half times 60 cents to find the price of the cookies. We can do that as a decimal. We can change one and a half to a decimal number quite easily. Whatever our price is for cookies, right, we have to find out how many cookies we can uh, buy. So we have one, two, and we have a question mark. Same process, different numbers, complication of figuring out how much a cookie costs. Okay, this one is another one uh, where I juxtapose the uh, practice set with the homework. Studies show that a typical giant hummingbird can flap its wings once in every eight hundredths of a second while flying for seven and two tenths seconds. How many times will a typical giant hummingbird flap its wings? Well, we have our hole. Is seven and two tenths, and we know that the parts. Well, we can let's see how many eight hundredths we can get from that. We don't know how many, so we have seven and two tenths divided by eight hundredths, and we can think we have seven and two tenths. Um, divided by eight hundredths. I'm going to have to move the decimal two places here. So we got two places here. And we have a placeholder. So we now have the problem of 720 divided by eight. Eight goes into 72 nine times. We subtract. We get a zero. We're going to have to put a zero because eight goes into zero zero times. And we get 90. I want you to look at that number and, and think about the, the next part here. It says a ruby-throated hummingbird can flap its wings four times faster, four times faster. So are we going to end up with a larger number or a smaller number? If it's faster, it's going to be a smaller part of the second. So even though it says four times, we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to divide it. We're going to have a Four tenths, or I mean, excuse me, eight hundredths. We're going to have to divide that by four. And we can simply do that out. Um, eight divided by four, put in our decimal, give us zero, and that goes in twice. So even though it says eight times faster, we're going to end up with a lower number. So now I have two hundredths, and now I have seven and two tenths divided by two hundredths, and that equals 720, that's two hundredths, divided by two, and 720 divided by two is three, subtract, I get a one, a twelve, and that goes in six times, and we put a zero in there for the ones place. Note that if it's four times faster, I get a number. It's going to flap its wings four times as many times. And if I look at my 
90 over here and I look at my 360 here in some ways if I thought this through I could have just gone well if it's four times faster they're going to multiply it four times as, or going to flap them uh, four times as many times and I could reason out that it would be 360 this way as well that's very similar to the word problem we have a whole of 4 and 75 hundredths as opposed to a whole of 7 and 2 tenths. Our part is 1 fourth as opposed to 8 hundredths. Okay, and how many can we cook with a meat? So again, we're going to take our 4 and 7 tenths and find out how many quarters do we have in it. Very simple process is the same. The numbers are slightly different. Part B is uh, it involves the sliders, and the sliders are half as much meat as used for a regular hamburger. If we're using a quarter pound here, it's easy enough to find out what a slider is. It's, it's half of that, one half of one quarter. Very simple calculation. And again, the same process as we see in the practice set. So again, just plug in different numbers, follow the same procedure. Create a story uh, context for the following expressions. Now these are from the practice set. And uh, not that hard to do. I always use Bob, okay, and I like things like rope and sugar and stuff like that. So uh, Bob has, uh, he has, Bob has, well, we'll start with that, five and one-fourth pounds of, we'll say, flour this time. He uses two and one eighth pounds for bread. He then, okay, so what do we have here? We find out what our difference is. We're going to end up with a number there. And uh, whatever that number is, we got to find a way to split it into four parts. Uh, he puts the remaining flour in four equal containers. How much flour is in each container? No, again, don't make these too uh, complicated. Okay, the next one is 4 times 4 and 8 tenths uh, over 8 tenths. And of course that could be the same as 4 and 8 tenths divided by 8 tenths. Okay, so the next one, uh, we got to think of something. Let's say each day, each day for... Four days he took four and eight tenths pounds of sugar and put them in bags weighing eight tenths of a pound. How many bags of sugar would he make in four days? And this time we have a tape diagram and we need to make a word problem. The best thing to do with that is make an expression. So what do I have? I see that I have six as my whole and it's split into four equal parts and after that I split uh, each one of those fourths into three parts but I want to find out what two of them are so let's work with an expression here so I have six and what do I have so I have six times one-fourth correct 
and now now that I have 6 times 1 fourth, that's what this amount is, 6 times 1 fourth. What do I want to find? I want to find 2 thirds of that. So 2 thirds of 6 times 1 fourth is the same as 2 thirds times 6 times 1 fourth. And uh, we can come up with a problem in order to do that. This, uh, Frankly, this screencast is long enough that I have interpreted this into an expression. Uh, that's the first step we follow and when we have a tape diagram. And then from there, we can work with a word problem. I, ca I, can, uh, I can talk one out. I could have, uh, he had six pounds and he used one-fourth of that on Monday. And two-thirds of what he used on Monday was used to make... Uh, bread. And how much flour did he use to make bread? There's many other examples we can use.